one of the things I wanted to make a comment on is people tend to think they've got to go out and find the perfect photo in order to, to get a good painting. And it's, it's actually quite the opposite. What you want to do is work from a fairly ordinary photo. Uh, and our job as artists is to make the ordinary a little more extraordinary or more brilliant or more creative or something that, that's a little more dramatic. And we will always have better success in doing that if we just have sort of a mundane photo and it gives us the freedom to then enhance and embellish and really make uh, the, the painting a lot more magical. So at any rate, um, I, what this, this photo that you're going to see and work from today is a very, very small part. I cropped it way, way down. It was a much larger photo of Cinque Terre with all the surroundings that are around it and the things that are going on. And really what I wanted to do was just focus on the, this boat in the foreground and a few of the, of the many boats in the background with some of the buoys that are bobbing in the water. And uh, there's, there's people and there's things going on way in the background, but that's not really what the painting is about. My painting today is going to be about this boat and the, the sparkling water in the foreground. So for that reason, I didn't put a lot of detail in my drawing. And, and this is the drawing. It's basically this foreground boat, a couple of boats. I just picked three boats instead of the six or seven that were back there. And I just very lightly put in where my shoreline is. I didn't even put any background detail in the, in the sketch. One of the things that I think everybody has a little struggle with, or some people do, are these boats. So I'm going to uh, just lay a piece of white paper down here. And I want to show you a quick way to do a boat. Um, we've got the bow, and I'm going to put the bow, and I'm going to put the, the back end, the stern, in there. And then really all I want to do is have a figure eight come around. And then rather than drawing the back end of that figure eight, I just dotted it in so you could see where that is. But you can see how, how uh, that's a fairly simplistic way to go about doing a boat. I'll just bring the one side down, bring this side down, bring my, my, uh, the keel up, and there's my boat, right? Just that easy. And I can take uh, a different pencil, where's my other pencil here, and a racer, and I can kind of come in and, and stiffen up that bow line and the stern post. I can put in a little bit of the, the, the color on the bottom of the boat, the little band that goes around the, the gunnel, and, and there's your, your boat. It's just that simple. So think in terms of a figure eight, and that gives you the, what a boat looks like in perspective. Then you can always put your, your little uh, uh, bumpers on the side. We can put the, the line that goes uh, tied to the buoy so it doesn't drift away. But that's, that's it. It's just that simple. And I, if you try to make it more complicated, it'll just uh, come back to bite you because you just want to uh, have fun with it, with the painting part of it as we get going. Now, I'm going to keep my photo reference uh, fairly close here. It's off to the side. Uh, hopefully, all of you have a photo reference as well. But uh, you'll probably want to refer back to that as you look at some of the values of how dark some of the blues are, how light some of the blues are. The blues on this boat are going to be a combination of cerulean blue and cobalt blue. We're going to use uh, a number of layers of water. The water itself down in the foreground is um, starts with a very, very pale wash uh, of a light green that is kind of a golden green or a cadmium green light. And then we're going to uh, introduce a little bit of viridian green in that and let it dry. Then we'll come back in and we'll put some more water on that and some more wet washes across it. But the key is we have to do it in a series of steps and allow each step to dry. First thing I want to do is probably work with a pretty good size flat brush so that we can lay in some water, uh, just some wet the surface around our negative shapes. I want to leave the, the, the four boats that I've got here dry. I don't want to wet them. I'm going to leave them as, as completely dry, which means I've got to come in around those boats 
and work in and around them with a, a brush that's big enough to hold some water so I can get this whole area on my painting wet and not have it dry prematurely. So I'll get plenty of water on my brush and I'm gonna to try to leave a few little skips around some of these buoys, just leave some dry paper there as well because it, it will help uh, keep the color more brilliant on those buoys if, uh, if I can leave the paper dry right now. So coming down uh, under, you know, underneath these guys, I'm just gonna bring the water down to the, the top of the gunnel on these boats and just wet the paper. And it doesn't really matter, you know, as long as you leave the, the boats dry, we're good. So just use your brush, come up along the shoreline that you've got sketched in. And if, it's, uh, if the water uh, is pooling up too radically, then lower the angle of your board slightly so that it sits there a little more uh, on the paper, just like a, you know, without running downhill too fast. And, and may, when you get down here in the lower right part of your painting, just, just slop that water on pretty quick so that you're wetting the surface enough so that when we go back and introduce paint to this, we're gonna have uh, a nice, very light pale wash that's wet and wet. And if you need to kind of move your head a little bit to an angle to see the light on your, on your paper, just to make sure you've got everything wet and you're not any big uh, dry spots where you want to have water. Okay, my paper is now wet. I'm going to go to my palette. Let me back this up a little bit. And I'm going to pick up some um, light green. This is a golden green. You can use a cadmium green light, but you want to get plenty of water in this. This is not, we don't really want to make this too intense. And I'm going to bring this down just between these, the reflections on this, uh, these bumpers, just to tone the paper slightly. That's all we're trying to do is just tone the paper, throw in some of this, uh, this light green color, let it run through all the wet areas in your paper, come back up and, and you remember, you've got the, the boat itself is dry. So none of this water or this pigment is gonna run into those areas in the boat they'll stay as a white negative shape. Now, once this is done, um, I'm looking at my, I really don't need to get up too far or too far into the background of the water because that's gonna be a different color. But I want this nice golden green to really have some, some, a strong undertone in my water in the foreground. And if you want, you can get a little drier paint in a couple of spots and maybe throw in a little bit more intense pigment. But if your board is angled about, you know, five degrees or so, that, water, that pigment is gonna run downhill and it's going to uh, soften and just be really very nice and, and soft and, and runny. And Randy, I've got two exactly. questions for you. One's yeah. asked, someone's asking, what greens can they use if they haven't got the greens you have? And could you focus in a bit more on the bit you're painting? How's that? Perfect. That better? Yeah. And the greens I'm using are a golden green. Um, I'm not sure. You might use a little bit of lemon yellow and, and turquoise, uh, like a light turquoise, cobalt turquoise. Let me see what that would look like if we uh, took a little lemon yellow, which is a cool yellow, and we mixed up a little bit of cobalt turquoise. You get sort of the same look here. It's a little cooler but I'm just throwing that on here as well. But while it's wet, it, it won't hurt anything. And it just gives a little bit more variety uh, to the coloration. All right, now while the paper is still wet up in the background, up uh, between the boats and the shoreline, I wanna get more of a neutral color and it needs to be a little bit warmer. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of a Indian yellow, which is a warm yellow, mix it with this cobalt that's uh, turquoise that's here, and just let some of this come down through the, uh, the background. And my paper's still wet, and I'm gonna add just a little bit of uh, more turquoise and a little bit of ultramarine blue in a couple spots, and just let this all just kind of run 
wet my brush a little bit and help pull this down towards the boat, leaving a couple of these buoys with a dry, wet, uh, dry spot on the paper, working around them. And just bring these colors down towards the, um, the boat. And I dropped in just a little bit of burnt sienna in these wet areas. And we'll just let those kind of flow and run together. So we have a nice soft uh, mixture of, and it's very fluid going through this water uh, or the wet area of the, the ocean. Um, and you can just play around with some of these colors. You might use a little bit of, of uh, ultramarine blue, mix it with some of this green back up in here, add a little bit of burnt sienna in there. But be sure you leave the boats dry and white so that there's no, uh, no, no water to let these colors run into the boats. We want to protect those as a white and preserve the white of the paper there. All right, now we've basically got our undertones fixed here. I'm going to add, start adding a little bit of uh, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue to this, just a, a very loose mixture. Let's see if I can move this over so you can see the intensity of this. It's, it's just kind of a, a neutral grayish color when you add blue and burnt sienna together. And then I'm going to come back. See if I can move this back into the frame for you. There we go. And we'll just drop in a little bit of that neutral color and let it run down. To the boats. And uh, what we want is a little bit of tone to define the shape of those boats as negative shapes, which means we've got to have enough dark and I'm talking about a very pale mid-tone in these areas around the boats so that they show up as negative white shapes. Let me get a little bit more cool in here with the ultramarine coming down towards the boat. A little back in here. Now, the, the foreground water, a boat, the, our foreground is still very wet. I'm going to take a different brush now. And what I want to do while this is still wet and all these colors are just kind of running, I'll, I'll wick up any excess puddles right up against these boats just and wipe it off on a rag or a tissue. And then we're going to pick up some really dark, 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 dry paint. And I'm going to use Prussian blue. And I'd like to uh, use a little bit of indrathine or perylene green, anything that's really dark, but not black or gray or Payne's gray. Uh, so I put a little bit of that in my palette over here. I'll swing over so you can see what I'm doing. It's, it's uh, pardon the camera angle, but it's on a swivel. But you can see that this is really dark. It's also pretty dry. If I run my finger through it, the water doesn't run back together. It stays nice and dry like melted butter. And I'm going to come back to my painting now and using a little bit of uh, towards a vanishing point up to the uh, shoreline that's off the board over to the left, I'm going to imagine some little rivulets of, of darks that just kind of work in and around. And it's going to start feathering because this paint is drier than the wet of the paper. And I'm just going to drop this in here and just create these little nice marks that suggest the direction of the, of the uh, what do you call it, the current. And that's just kind of pulling some of these down. And I'm using a flat brush, fairly stiff flat brush, to drop these pigment colors in to the water. And what I've done is I've left some really nice light areas that have sort of that warm, light green undertone in between these dark marks. And all the edges around these are going to really start to uh, feather out now. I'm going to rinse my brush completely, get all that dark pigment off. And my brush is now uh, clean. Can you say what the dark color was again, please, uh, Randy? What's that? Can you say what the dark color was again, please? The dark color was a mixture of, of uh, Prussian blue, 
in whatever dark green you have. If you have a little sap green or if you have viridian or I, I put a little squeeze of uh, perylene in the water, I mean in my palette. But using this brush now that's wet, I'm going to come in and drop a little bit of water in a few of these places next to this dark pigment and it's going to bloom and you can see what's happening here already. Let me zoom in on that. Can you see how the water, when you drop it into some of these, and it's not real wet, it's just a clean. And it goes in next to some of these dark colors and it starts to repel the dark color and make these fluid marks on the paper that look like uh, blooms. That's what they are, they're just blooms. And it just makes it magical. At this point, I'm gonna let this kind of dry and I want you to, to take your time and do what we've just done. And I'm gonna back the camera up so you can see the background, how white the paper is, how white the boats are compared to the toning that I put down as an under, uh, under color, under coat tone on the paper. I'm gonna wick up any excess water that's pooling up on the edges so it doesn't start you know, blooming back up into my, my foreground. Um, but that's, that's the objective right now. We'll add more darks to the water later, but I wanted to get this down as my initial uh, application, which is the lightest part of all the water that we'll be reflecting. We'll come back and we'll re-wet this, but we've got to dry this uh, in a bit. So I'm, I'm going to let you have a chance to go ahead and do this once you've uh, got your, your boats defined. You want to just kind of come back in and and lay this wet and wet in and around those boats, leaving the boats dry. Any questions at this point, Lois, that you can see on the chat uh, or that anybody might have? Um, someone, someone was saying, help, he's going far too fast, but I, I did reassure them that you were going to stop, which would you have for that? Uh, no, I'm, I'm stopping here and letting you catch up. Yeah. Um, I'm going to also take some of these darks with this, it's, my brush is uh, damp, but I've wiped it off. So it's just a kind of a damp surface on the brush and I'll drag it across some of these darks. And can you see how that just softens some of these marks in a few places? It just keeps it really soft and uh, fluid the way wa water might be moving through and across this, uh, this foreground area. Um, could you just revise the first colors that you used, please? I think you said lemon yellow and turquoise. Yeah, I, I started with uh, back up in here a little bit of lemon yellow, which is a cool yellow. It's a very light yellow and uh, a little bit of light cobalt turquoise or um, it's a Windsor Newton color I have, but most of the manufacturers have a light turquoise and you mix those two together and you get this really nice, soft kind of mid-tone pale um, color. And, and really all I'm after is to try to get a hint of a little bit of green down in uh, uh, some of these areas that are lighter so that it looks like we've got, you know, some of that warmth reflecting in the water. And I'll just, I'm just coming back and adding a little bit more of that, that green color in there that's very pale. And uh, it just builds up those layers of soft light color. Um, someone's got some other questions, please. Uh, sure. Could you explain a bit about what the um, vanishing point is? How, um, can, can you, you have can your horizon line. It's always going to be, you know, at some point, you, it's in your paper. It might be lower, it might be higher. Here I have a higher horizon line. But if I were to extend that off to the left and off to the right, Anything that goes back to a vanishing point over on the left and another vanishing point like the sides of this boat going back to the to the right, that's a two point perspective. And with water moving through a, 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 an area, you definitely want to have some movement of current going across there. But some of that current is going to move away from the viewer off towards a vanishing point. So we want to try to take advantage of, of just the idea of a bit of a vanishing point. I'm getting a really big bloom right here. So rather than keep talking, I'm gonna drop in some really dry darks in a few spots here, just to, to uh, reinforce where the, some of those darks are, go across a couple of my reflections, just to uh, really 
ground the uh, the idea of some some uh, darks in our foreground. Uh, can you see? I'm going to zoom down. What's happening over here is really pretty, where you get this little bit of water reacting with these really dark colors, and you can see it happening in a number of places. And that just is unique to watercolor. And if we can get those kind of blooms to occur in something that's as free form and free flowing as water, uh, you know, an ocean surface, it that we'll still see that when we uh, paint over the top of this. That will always be there, and it will really create a nice impression. Now I'm going to take my my uh, heat gun and try to dry this a little bit so we can start layering in more. And if you've got a, a hair dryer and if you're on mute, go ahead and dry your paper. The next step that we're gonna take is we're gonna go into our background. And I want to um, just lay in a very warm wash with a light uh, raw sienna, kind of a warm sandy beige color. Um, I'll move my board over a little bit and Basically, I'm just going to build up a nice wash. I'm going to use a bigger brush. I'm not necessarily wetting this area. Uh, I just want to get a really sloppy wet. Let me see if I can get over here so you can see this really, really wet uh, wash in my mixing area in my palette. Get lots of paint on your brush, lots of water on your brush, so that the, the bristles of your brush are fully saturated with a great load of of water and pigment. And if you just dip your brush into the mixing well and hope to get a little water on it, you're not going to have a really nice saturated uh, brush full. So that's why I work with my, my mixing well and my palette to make sure I've got plenty of water and paint equally mixed. And then I can come back in and I can just start very quickly dropping this into the background, bringing it down towards the, the uh, shoreline. And what I'm doing is I'm actually wetting my paper with all the pigment, the wet pigment on my brush without having to go back in and do a wet and wet type application. And I'm just gonna bring this down and leave just a, a very hairline of dry paper right along the shoreline so that I maintain that, that sh you know, some definition of where the shoreline is. If I get too, too close to my water and this beige leaks or, or you know, creeps into that wet area of my water, um, I lose the separation between shore and the water. So now that it, this is wet, I'm going to take some burnt sienna and it's much, much redder. See how, how much redder this is? That burnt sienna has more of a cinnamon cast to it. And I'll come back in and I'm going to just uh, get a little bit darker in a couple of spots, just, just to kind of replicate how the shore comes down in a, a few warm places. And my board is up on a half inch roll of tape. And so it just gives me a little bit of angle so that the water starts and the pigment starts running down towards the shore. Now, over here on the left, I want that to be a, a little bit different. I want to get more of a, of a uh, burnt umber and uh, burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue is going to really cool this off quite a bit and make it darker. When you add ultramarine blue to a, a, any of the beiges, it just takes them to a darker place. And I'm going to really drop in some nice, rich um, darks in here, add a little bit of blue in a few spots. This is all still very, very wet. And it doesn't really matter how perfect you make it. I might even add a little bit of raw umber in here. It changes up some of the, the temperature of some of these uh, colors that are coming in. And then I'll add just a little bit more of the burnt sienna in, in just to make a little more brilliant uh, color within that loose fluid background. Go back to my raw umber, just mix a little bit of that up and just start pulling some of these things down. Over here where it's very light on the right, I'm gonna uh, take a little bit of uh, raw umber all by itself and just drop a little bit of that in there into this wet area and then get a little bit of Payne's gray or neutral tint or something and just drop that right into that raw umber 
And when the Payne's gray or the neutral tint mixes with the raw umber, it, it really makes kind of an interesting uh, mixture that takes on a whole character of its own. And I want to get fairly dark right above these boats here and just let that kind of go. And Randy, just, can you revise the color of the wash, the first wash? Starting with a, a raw sienna, just a very pale raw sienna and laid down uh, a damp area in this upper third or upper quarter of the paper, just above the shoreline. I tried to leave a little band of, of dry paper between the water and the, the land or the shore. And now I started changing it up by adding some uh, burnt umber, a little bit of raw umber, uh, some ultramarine blues in here. I'm going to add a little bit more blue in here just to darken this up. But I don't want it to be the same all the way across. And I, I don't really need it to be all that defined. Think about this. I'm using ultramarine, burnt umber, raw umber, raw sienna. What are these? They're all sedimentary colors. What does sedimentary color do in a wet wash? It gives us texture. So as we start to see all these textures and a little bit of the lighter areas where the initial raw sienna went down, uh, we're seeing changes in value. We're seeing some areas that are lighter. I'm adding just a drop of water here and there into some of these areas uh, because it's still a wet wash and it's the board's angled upwards so the water runs downhill a little bit. But it's, it's giving us a tremendous amount of variety in this background without having to get too uh, carried away. So I'm going to just start adding a little bit more of the raw sienna back in here to, so it isn't quite so uh, light and dark. I want to get a little bit more consistency in some of my uh, values so that we don't, it doesn't draw attention to it. I just want to give it some nice um, character back there that the viewer can look at and imagine is terrain without us having to give it too much definition. Now, I'm, make, I'm sticking my brush into a little bit of uh, lizard and crimson and mixing it with my um, Payne's Gray burnt umber or raw umber mixture, a little bit of the, the alizarin crimson to that earthy tones. And as I swing back the camera to the, to the painting, I'm going to drop in more of this right into the background here. Leave a little bit of light areas in there. There's a little bit of the orange from the burnt sienna coming through. There's a lot of the, uh, the raw umber in there that's kind of rich. And then I've got some of the, the neutral tint. So just play with those and have fun with them. We're not trying to really do anything other than design a background that's loose and fluid and uh, just kind of in something that's left to the interpretation of the viewer. Now, as we get down closer to the shoreline, I want to get some fairly dry pigment that's a combination of raw umber and, and Payne's gray, maybe a little bit of that dark blue, whatever we had there. And I'm just going to drop in a little bit of dark in a couple of spots right on the, on the shore. Take a smaller brush. And I've got just a real small round and I might come back in and just soften part of that and allow some of that to creep down into the water just in a couple of spots. I don't want much to happen there. I just want to give us a little connection from the land into the water so that we still see the shoreline very well defined, but we're, we're breaking it up. If we have a, an uninterrupted shoreline, what's going to happen is that's going to draw too much attention to that. So I want to just, just barely what soft. What color are you using again, please, Randy? I just used a little bit of uh, the Payne's gray and some raw umber. And I, I just kind of touched the shoreline where it touched the water, leaving some of the white dry paper along the shoreline in a few places and just softening this dark above the shoreline so that we see bits and pieces of that white without it being totally um, defined. If you leave a really well-defined edge that's continuous across a painting, it's going to upstage everything in your painting. We want to make it just sort of implied. 
without really giving too much away to the, to the viewer. Now I'm taking my, my flat brush. It's got a little bit of water on it. It's perfectly clean. It doesn't have any pigment on it at all. I'm gonna squeeze most of it out and I'm gonna run that right along the edge there to soften those white marks area where we had the, the shore, just to just to kind of reestablish the level and where some of this clean water hits those dark pigments, it's going to creep upward in a bloom. So I'm going to stop here and let you get your background in. And we'll come back and probably add some more paint to this. But for now, I think this is a, a, a good start for what we're trying to accomplish with our background. Um, I want to get a little bit more warmth over on this side without being too... Uh, too obvious. And I'll drop in a little bit more while it's, you know, what's happening is this, your paper surface is constantly changing. When you do wet and wet, that pigment is moving. It never stops uh, reacting with the other pigments around it. So as the paper starts to lose some of its moisture, we see constant change occurring. And you have to be monitoring that. You have to be kind of looking and watching to see what's happening. And if you like what's happening, leave it alone. If you think it needs to be a little darker, go ahead and add a little drier, dark pigment in there. Keep in mind that this is 50% water that's on the surface of this horizontal area. That means that as the water evaporates and as the paper dries, this dark that we see now is going to dry 50% lighter because the water just, it's, you know, what we're seeing now is just wet surface like when rain falls on a paved road, by the time the, ro the, the sun comes out and dries the road, it's a lot lighter in value. So we have to do, you know, take some steps to, uh, you know, accommodate that phenomenon that's occurring. And I'm just adding more darks while this is still wet. The surface of the paper is just really nice and wet. And I can add really dry pigment and it'll stay darker. And I can add, alizarin crimson, I can add burnt sienna, I can add these other colors without really uh, changing anything or hurting anything. I'd like to get a little bit more of the, the burnt umber over here on this side to really darken this a little bit more. So I'm just dropping that in and then I can, uh, I don't know, just probably just take a rigger. Where's my rigger brush? While this is still wet, I'm just going to drop and sprinkle a little bit of water droplets off my rigger onto that surface and that pure drops of water hitting that dark pigment will immediately start creating little dewdrop uh, blooms that create additional texture and that's all calculated to replicate the side of this bank of, of rocks and earth and uh, terrain that's back there much like a camera that's out of focus. We, we just want to focus our depth of field on the, the foreground and not have the background really all that defined. We just want to feel it back there and, and create sort of a feeling that uh, we sense is terrain. The viewer's brain will associate that with rocks and so on, and they will uh, they'll see that by themselves. Now, I'm going to look back at my my photo reference, and I've got a few areas that are really dark. And keep in mind, when I say that this is going to dry 50% lighter, um, I need to drop in some really strong darks. So I'm going to drop in a few, few darks with some raw umber on top of that wet uh, area. And I'm going to take a clean brush and just this just slightly damp and drop a little bit of water in there to create some blooms between those two darks. And then I can come back with a little bit of Payne's gray and drop that right into the, the center of some of those really dark darks. And who's to say what all that is? It looks pretty uh, intimidating right now, like we've got a lot of stuff that's upstaging our painting, but the reality is it's all going to dry very, very pale uh, and much lighter than what we're seeing now. And we want that really loose, fluid feeling to, uh, to be what we see. And you see where some of this, uh, this background is leaking into the damp of my water in the foreground. It's just kind of creeping through. And I 
I'm like, let it roll. That's cool. Because what it's going to do is it's going to tie my, uh, my background into my foreground in a couple of places just to give it sort of a nice soft fluidity that is just going to be wonderful in creating the character of this, um, all the reflections of the water that are coming down. And I'm trying to get this a little darker right up against these boats so that we have value changes and get a little bit of the gray in here just to, to come in behind this boat. And the, my water is still a little bit damp, the, the area on my paper that's replicating water. And I wanna create contrast right up against um, the boats. So we see the boats as a, a really strong shape. And if we don't have contrast in there, we won't see them as a shape. So I'm just coming in across the tops of these boats with just a little bit of cooler value, but keeping it light. What color are you adding there, please? Um, I think it's a, kind of like a cerulean blue. Um, and I happen to have a, just a touch of Payne's gray uh, off in the, the side of my paint, sort of the junk that's in your, your mixing well. If you look over here, I've got got just sort of a, a combination of things. I just dip a little bit into my, my brush into a couple of these puddles and I come back with a, a kind of a nice uh, neutral cool that I can put right up against these boats and create the reflection as it comes towards the viewer. Now this is a problem. See where that's starting to run down too much. I'm just going to take a tissue and wick some of that up because it's just too wet and it's coming down too, too, with too much dominance. Um, and I'll come across this leak and just break that up with a damp brush. Like I just drag it right through there and it just picks up that paint. So there's uh, our first step. Let's uh, make sure everybody has a chance to get this far along. I want to, I don't want to get uh, too far ahead of everybody. And I want to give you plenty of opportunity to do what we've done now. I'm going to drop in that the, the pigment started to repel too much in this area and create too much of a hot spot of white. So I'm just dropping a little bit of raw sienna right into this area that's uh, was a little too light because it would compete with the negative shapes of the boats. Um, if you want to hold off on sprinkling any water in this until your paper is a little farther along in the drying process, um, because otherwise the blooms will just start overpowering everything in your painting. I'm going to go back and lift a little bit of water off of the, the shoreline where it's got a little bit heavy. And these are just little adjustments that you make as you watch the paper dry. It's, uh, it's always fascinating to watch paper dry and uh, see what the pigment is doing. See how this is leaking down into those deep, those damp areas. Sometimes you have to take a small round brush, wipe all the, the water and paint off of it and just soften or come back in and touch it with a tissue just to kind of keep it from getting too, uh, too hard edged where it starts to run down into your water. Uh, I'm, while you're painting that, I'm going to dry my background. So I'll just keep talking while I'm drying, but this, this background is really, really wet. Uh, I might even take a little bit of a, a squirt bottle here and just squirt a little of this just to get the colors to flow together a bit uh, and soften even more. I, uh, I particularly like just taking a little mist and just one spot of mist on here unifies a lot of those colors. We still see the, the reds, we still see the burnt siennas, we still see the burnt umbers, we see uh, the raw siennas, but that little bit of mist, what it does is it, it touches that pigment that's on the paper and it lifts it back up and it starts moving it on that additional mist that sits the surface of your paper. And these colors all start to mingle and mix right on the surface of the paper um, without us having to manipulate them with a brush. And it's always better to let the water move the pigment around so that the, the darks mix with the, you know, and the cools mix with the warms and you get a, a much nicer glow in the final result. Um, as this starts to dry, 
Now might be a good time to take my rigger and sprinkle a little bit of water on there. We're gonna get just much more defined uh, blooms than we did initially with the, uh, when it was really, really wet. But I like, I like how uh, organic it's looking. We're gonna leave this alone and move away from this in a minute uh, and focus on our water and our boats. But I had to get this down so that we saw some of the, the true darks that we wanna have in our background. Uh, if we want to come back and get maybe a little bit of a wet, uh, what am I calling, it? a Payne's gray or neutral tint and just drop a few little darks here and there to suggest that there's little caves or something and crevices back in that background. The paper is still probably still wet enough that when you touch it with these darker colors, the dark's gonna stay, but it's not gonna be a hard edge. It's just gonna give you a nice rich dark, like a little hole or crevice back in the background. And, and that's about all we're after is just a, a couple of dark accents to uh, give a little bit of uh, poignance, poignancy or, or drama to some of those little crevices that are off in the background that the viewer gets hints of, but not a lot of, uh, it's not all that defined. It's, it's more up to our imagination to see what's going on there. All right. What I want you to do is, is check the surface of your paper uh, in the bottom two thirds of your painting. This was pretty wet when we started. Um, we did a wet and wet. And when we did that wet and wet, a, uh, it really soaked up the paper and it takes a long time for that to dry. But I want you to really take your hair dryers or get this nice and dry because we're gonna glaze on some more layers of green in our water and this needs to be dry. If we try to do this without drying the paper thoroughly, we're just gonna make mud. And we want these beautiful rich greens to come through uh, and build up one more layer of value of, of a viridian or a hooker's green. And I'm gonna use, uh, if you wanna look up here at the screen, I'm gonna use a, uh, a, a flat brush because I'm gonna be laying down a wash I suppose if you have a squirrel mop, that will work just as well. I like the flats. I, I, I use them all the time. I also use squirrel mops, but I think the flat brush uh, can lay down things pretty quick. And that's what we're after here. So I'll take this. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean an area in my, my palette where I can mix up some nice Viridian emerald green color. And if I have a lot of neutral tint or Payne's gray in my, my palette, it's just gonna muddy it up. So if you look over here, you can see I've got um, kind of a, an area here in my palette that I can clean off. And I'm just gonna wipe this clean so that I can get some real pure color mixed up with, and I don't have a Viridian, I have a hooker screen, but any kind of a Viridian that's a cool green, you can see what this is looking like. And you can also see that I'm trying to get a pretty wet fluid wash puddle here in my mixing area. So I'll bring my camera back to my water and I wanna work primarily down around where this, uh, the foreground is. I'll get a little bit up towards the shore in a minute, but for now, I'm just gonna use the flat of my brush to lay this nice color almost as if it were uh, currents moving across the boat and around the boat and engulfing the boat with this nice wash. And I can go right across some of these reflections. It doesn't matter. Uh, and I'm not trying to create any really perfect mark. I'm just kind of glazing across all this other stuff that's already embedded in the paper, the lights and the darks. But that, that warm green shows through. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of that in a few spots just to warm my foreground and then come back with my uh, hooker's green and just get some nice strong um, green right up against the boat. Let's do that. Let's get a little bit of uh, darker color as it comes down underneath the boat. We want to see that start to build up the darks. Drop in a little bit more over this other green that I put on here. And now 
I'm just going to add water to my mixing well where I had that emerald green, and I'm going to just start dropping in a little bit more of this green color in my background, but it's a very diluted wash. I don't really want to get too, uh, too defined, but it's by glazing over the top of these neutral colors that I had in there initially, this green kind of gives a, a little bit of a character and tint to the water that we start to feel as changing the temperature. Now I'm going to also pick up a little bit of cerulean blue and drop some of the cerulean in here in a couple of spots. It's got to be diluted. I don't want it to be real uh, dry because if you drop you know, a dry cerulean blue in here, it's going to leave too much of a mark. But I want to try to just color or get the temperature of that water to cool off just a little bit into the background with the, uh, and then I'm going to come straight off the, the stern of these boats with a little bit of that cerulean just to say, okay, there's some white reflection in the water. And when this dries, we're going to see, I'll take a smaller brush. We'll just soften those, those uh, little bits of green that came in there at the bottom of the boats. But you can see now I've left some white beneath these boats where there's some um, reflection in the water. We'll probably glaze over this again later, but these negative shapes will show up. They'll, they'll be retained in the water um, even after they're dry and after we glaze over the top of them. I'm coming in right underneath the, the stern and the, the, the side of the boats with just a little bit of that tone but leaving the white beneath it. Someone's asking your cerulean blue and peacock blue are the same color. No, peacock blue is a, like a phthalo blue that's very staining. Uh, we wanna just keep this very light with a, uh, a pale green wash. You can use a little bit of cobalt with the, with the uh, green, the emerald green or the, the puckers green, or you can use cerulean. But the bottom line is neither one of them are gonna be real intense or staining. We want to just have a nice gentle uh, look here in our, our water. And I'm just throwing a little bit of water in here now to soften some of these marks in a few spots. Take my flat, go back and get a little bit of this kind of right behind the, the boat to darken this gently as it comes up against the boat with a, a very pale subtle color of green. We'll go back and forth between cerulean blue and the hooker's green or viridian green. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm just really punching up the value contrast between the, the, the tone behind the boat and the white negative shape of the boat. And I'll come right back into my foreground and drop in some rich uh, drier greens here just to, to punch that uh, emerald green up. I call it emerald green because it's such a bright green, but by having put those darks in there earlier, I've really established where my, uh, my darks have to be. Okay, I need to let this dry now. I'm going to put a few darks coming across here, almost like some continuation of the, uh, the current, just in the wet and wet area. And it, it's just very subtle. You don't have to worry about it working. You just kind of drag your brush through there. And if your brush has a little bit drier paint than the wet of the paper, you'll be in good shape. So, all right, we're gonna let that, I'm gonna take a tissue and wick up all the water that's collected down around the tape so that it doesn't creep back in and do something I wasn't expecting. Uh, I do this more of a habit than anything else. I, you know, once you've been doing a lot of wet and wet work uh, and you've got water running down across your board, just always get in the habit of, uh, of wiping up excess water that comes down because it just, you, you just never know what it's going to do to your painting. And usually when you're working somewhere else, it's reacting and you look back later and you go, oh my goodness, how did that happen? And uh, it's never what you expect. So 
Um, we don't have really enough definition uh, for our, our shoreline. So I, while I'm letting this foreground dry, I'm gonna go back in and pick up a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of the, uh, the, the uh, Payne's gray, and just try to get kind of a neutral dark and allow my shore to be just a bit darker there. And I just drag my brush across that. And in a couple of spots, that really just helps define that, uh, that edge a little bit without it being too obvious. See how that just, you know, a few spots just comes down. And then I'll soften the top of those marks so that they just blend into the background. Now we definitely see earth tones back there. And then we have the water gets lighter and lighter in value as it moves back towards the shoreline. It's going to get much richer and darker and cooler as it comes towards us in the shadows of the boat. And I've got a lot of marks that are very subtle coming across these things. Um, you can sort of see where current might be. If I take a big brush now and I start adding a little bit of the, uh, um, I'm gonna add a little bit of the, well, I use peacock blue. It's really a phthalo blue. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of that in a few spots here. And it's just a really wet, uh, I'll show you. Can you see how wet that is in my mixing well? And that's uh, Peacock Blue by Holbein. Uh, if you've got Thalo Blue, it'll look the same way. But I'm just gonna drop some of this in here in a couple spots. And again, come down towards the, the edge of the boat and allow this to get, and I'm gonna drag my, my things right across these light areas that we put in there initially. I'll come in around the edge of the boat and all of a sudden underneath the boat, we're starting to build up value. We still see light areas. We still see dark areas, but gradually some of these are starting to get a little darker. I'm going to pick up a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue and drop a little bit of ultramarine blue in a couple spots. Is there any substitute for peacock or thalo blue for somebody who doesn't have either? Um, well, you can use cobalt and yellow. Let's see, it's not going to be the, quite the same, but it will get you dark. Yeah. Here's a little bit of cobalt. Let's put a little cobalt in here. See what happens. See how that's got an awfully strong blue tint to it. Um, but because it's such a big puddle of water here, in my opinion, I don't care. It, it, it can move around and do its own thing and create these nice uh, move bits of movement in the foreground. And as I come uh, over towards the lower right hand corner of my painting, I want to get a little bit more of that really thin wash of the phthalo blue, just glazing it across some of those greens. We'll let that dry. All right, I'm, I'm pretty dry. So what I'm going to do is take a, uh, a small round. I've got this medium sized round. It's got a nice point on it. I'm going to use the side of it, but I want to build up. If you remember, I said initially we're going to use um, cobalt blue and cerulean. And if we look at our, if we go back to our photo reference, we have a little bit more light out here on the bow, and we definitely have a lot of light back here on the stern. And then underneath the gunnel on the front forequarter of the, of the boat, it gets a little darker. So we've got to show that change in value. Um, I don't know whether this phthalo blue here, this peacock blue is gonna uh, adulterate the, the colors. So I'm gonna wipe it up and get my brush wet and, and mix up a little bit of uh, cobalt and a little bit of cerulean. The cerulean is more opaque but it's not quite as bright and intense as the cobalt. So the cobalt, I'm gonna mix up over here on the left side a little bit, get plenty of it in there so I have a nice wet, rich, juicy wet, uh, wash of cobalt, rinse my brush and do a lighter version, a wetter version of the cerulean. I will start with the cerulean and we're going to uh, just come down underneath this uh, 
the edge of the boat. I just drag using the whole side of my uh, my brush. I can bring this all the way down, and now I'm going to go back and get a drier amount of of cobalt and drop that into this wet area that I just painted. It's wet, so all of a sudden this stays a lot darker because the paint is is more of a cobalt, which is a richer, darker color, and it's drier than the cerulean that I put on there. And then I'm gonna continue right on around behind the boat. And over on the other side, well, actually, before I get that, I'm gonna just soften this front edge just a little bit. Now, over on the left side of the, of the bow, I wanna get a little bit of uh, ultramarine mixed with that cobalt, so it gets a little bit darker. And I'm going to come back in and really put some darks over there. Maybe add a little bit of that ultramarine darks down here behind these bumpers. Now, I clean my brush, get all the water, everything off of it. And I'm just going to take my brush and pull some of that pigment right down the side of the boat and then create just a couple of little hints where there might be some reflections, leaving some white spider marks uh, between some of these little um, reflections in the water. And this is where I'm gonna come back and use some of that, that, that really pale mixture of the peacock blue and just drop a little bit of this in a couple spots, clean my brush and then just, just literally feather it away to nothing in a couple of spots here, just so it feels like we have a, a bit of reflection on with some whites in between them on this white bow of the boat. And then over on the other side, we take the cerulean and we just right up against the, the, uh, the bow. I'm just, I'm gonna pull a clean brush towards that pigment and allow it to get darker as it comes up to the bow and have it a little bit lighter up against the darker water. But that's got to have feel like it's a little bit more in shadow than this side of the boat. So we'll just knock that white down, but keep it darkest right up against the, the bow sprit. We'll come back in and get the, the dark uh, blue on the underside of the boat in a moment. But uh, one of the things I forgot to do, I'm going to clean this. I'm going to get this short, stiff, flat brush, and I'm going to just get some clean water on it and lift a little bit of that pigment that came up on the bottom side of the boat. And it just, it just kind of, uh, before I get too far along, I can lift that right back to the white. While that's drying, Let's think a little bit about these boats in the background. We've got one that might be blue. Uh, it's got a little bit of blue trim on it. We've got one in the middle that's got some red trim on it. And then the one closest to us has some mahogany trim on it. So let's do the red one first using that same small round brush. Let's get a little bit of uh, pyro red, mix it with a little bit of a lizard crimson. And I just wanna get right along the upper edge of the boat's uh, gunnel, and that's not dark enough. So I'm gonna get some more pyro red and maybe even pick up a little bit of uh, um, warm cobalt violet. There we go. We don't need a whole lot. Just, just a little touch of it there on the edge of the boat. I'm gonna clean my brush. And I'm gonna go back and get that cobalt blue that we were using for the first boat. And I'll just do a little hint of that along the top edge of that boat. And this doesn't have to be real perfect. It doesn't have to be real dark. It's more of a mid-tone, just to give a hint. And then the underside, I'm gonna just take my damp brush after I've cleaned it, and I'm gonna feather that blue right down to the edge, the top edge of the, the middle boat. 
So everything gets a little cooler, uh, particularly along the stern edge. And I'll come back in and punch up the blue once this dries. But you can see what I did is I put that whole side of that boat in a little bit of shadow. Can you see how there's just enough tone on that white that it just cools it off compared to the boat in the middle? Maybe even right up against the, uh, the stern of the middle boat, I wanna get a little darker. I don't wanna get it too dark because I'm gonna come back with some, some dark uh, cobalt after this dries and reinforce the edges of that boat. Now the, the, the boat that's uh, closest to us in that grouping of three, we're gonna use a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. I use quinacridone burnt orange as my burnt sienna because it's a little more staining, a little more brilliant, and I, but it's basically the same color. And I'm just gonna add a little stroke that comes along the edge of that boat and it takes it right up. I'm gonna get a little bit of alizarin crimson mixed with that uh, burnt sienna. So once we get out past the boat in the middle, the, the bow gets a little darker. There we go. And I'll come back in the inside of that boat and put some marks in there after that dries, but you've got to let that dry first. So we've now, I'll back this camera up. You've got your three boats defined. You've got your foreground boat defined. Let's play with the inside of the foreground boat, the one that's in our center of interest. And if we look at our photo reference again, that blue back there is lighter than the one on the, the, the bow of the boat. So we need to, to work with a lighter version of cerulean blue, maybe a little bit more water, and we'll just put a light value right in that band that comes around towards the, the viewer. And I'm gonna get a little bit of a, a ultramarine blue and really darken the left side I'm sorry, the right side as it comes towards us. And I'll allow some of that dark to just kind of feather around the bend, around the stern. What and might be a substitute for alizarin crimson, someone asking, please? Uh, any, any cool red that you've got, like a magenta, a... Uh, Oh, wow, gosh, what are, I'm trying to think of the color names, the, the pinks, the, uh, you can add a little bit of uh, warm violet. That would be good. Uh, I use an uh, um, quinacridone violet by Holbein is my warm violet. Mineral violet is a little more sedimentary. It's a little earthier. It's not gonna be quite as staining or brilliant but it will work too, and you can water it down and it'll lighten up. Now, as this, this uh, inside of the boat comes towards the front of the boat, we wanna get that part of it a little bit darker, but leave a little bit of a white band for the top of the edge of the, uh, the, the boat to separate the foreground from the background on this boat. So that's, we'll come back in after this dries and put some darks in between the struts that are holding the boat together. I also want to bring a little bit of blue up here on the stern, I'm sorry, the, the, uh, the bow, and bring that right on down. That's in shadow. It may be white, but we're going to put a little bit of blue on it just to make it feel like it's in shadow. And then we'll get some cobalt blue water it down with, so you've got a mixture on your brush. And we'll just drop this into the underside of the boat where they paint the bottom of the boat. And we'll put a little bit over here on this side as well. Now, as we get towards the belly of the side of the, the, the gunnel, I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, uh, Prussian blue. It's much darker and I wanna get that right up underneath there. Clean my brush and just sort of feather that back into the cobalt. So it goes from a really nice deep dark to a little warmer color up here in the, uh, the front of the boat at the bow. All right, now 
I want to I want to make sure that we can see these bumpers. So we take a little bit of that same blue and we just feather in to the back side of that bumper and we get a little bit of shadow underneath it so that it stands out as a white negative shape. And it really, by pushing those dark cools right up against the, 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 the white bumper, we start to see them come away from the side of the boat. We get a little bit of a, a lighter blue, maybe a cerulean blue over here on this guy. And we can pull some of that blue right into the water. Okay. That works. Now, our paper hopefully is dry underneath this boat. So I'm, I'm always thinking about everywhere in my painting. I don't wanna to get too, too lost in one part of my painting, because if you lose sight of the rest of your painting, it doesn't have a good balance to it. So we have to go back now and get a little bit of tone on the uh, on the white part of the boat in the middle. And I'm using pink because that's ties into the the little accent trim band on it. And it also separates the middle boat from the, the boat closer to us. The one that is closer to us is going to have a little shadow on the bottom of its white bow. So I'm just going to take a very pale wash of, from my, you know, what's in my palette and just drag that along the edge of that boat, leaving the sterns all pure white. And I want to get a little bit of blue mixed with the red right up against this guy's back side so that you can see that that white really start to stand out. Rinse my brush, get a little bit more stronger blue over here on this other boat, clean my brush and just feather that dark back. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's just a little bit darker value of blue on the side of that farthest back boat up against the, the stern of the, the middle boat. And all I'm doing is trying to just accentuate the, uh, the, the white sterns, which have sunlight shining on them. Uh, one of the things I want to do is get a little bit of tone coming down into the water to define that, that boat. So I'm going to take my, my, uh, my big brush and just mix up some different colors here, just a neutral color. It starts with blue, but I'm mixing in a little bit of that alizarin crimson red. And I'm just going to come down with that as a dark to the upper side of that boat. Clean my brush and just add a little bit of water into that wash. Now the top of the boat, which is the inside of the boat, starts to show up a little bit more. And all of a sudden we've got a little bit of darker value. And I'm going to do a little bit right here and take my the edge of my brush and just feather that back, do the same thing here and the same thing here. So we start to see a little reflection of lighter value coming off those sterns. And remember, this is a very pale wash and it's just a, a, a kind of a neutral color that's, that's in there. And I'm just adding a little bit between some of these buoys just to darken the areas and then come break them up, get a little bit more of that green color, bring that right across some of these reflections. There we go. We'll let that dry. Questions? It's, uh, we're, we're building values around those white negative shapes. The, the white of this boat is the foreground. That's our center of interest. But these also are important. They connect to this boat with the reflections coming down. And it makes for a good composition that leads us into the painting, but it also brings us right back when we put our buoys in. So I'm just going to let this dry. And I want to come back now and using that, that smaller brush, 
so small round. I'm going to build up, because this is now dry, some darker, uh, drier blue. I'm using a mixture of ultramarine and cobalt. And I'm just going to kind of come right in underneath the, 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 uh, the edge. I don't know what they call the top edge of the boat. Somebody's a boat person here. They can probably tell me. Um, but we're just creating the structure of those struts. And I'm just going to soften each one of these marks with a little bit of water. Drop that in there so that we start to see some value where the white uh, struts stick up from the surface of the boat, the interior of the boat, to give it some uh, structure. And then as we come around the bend towards the viewer, I'm going to get this even darker. You remember I told you this stuff dries lighter. It went on pretty dark, but it dried and it got lighter. So I'm just redark. I'm darkening this to make it feel like it's coming towards us. We use that same color over here on the left to do the same, accomplish the same goal. Now, underneath these, uh, these little buoys, I want to get the, that a little bit darker so that we really see this accent band as a separate band from the reflections that are on the side of the white boat. And then underneath the rail, I'll come in with that same darker blue and just very subtly punch that up a little bit. So now we've got a pretty nice little uh, foreground, but the white inside that boat is upstaging the bow. So I'll take a little bit of, uh, of watered down cobalt, and I'm just going to drag this through the middle of the boat. And then as I get over towards the stern, I want it to get lighter and lighter. So I'll just push the dark towards the front of the boat. And now that's just a little one step darker in value than the, the actual front of the boat. So there you go. That's That takes care of that. I'm going to punch up a little bit of a shadow coming off this buoy. Same with this one, just so we have something that comes off, follows the contour of the side of the boat. And then now that this is dry, one of the things we want to do is take a big brush and get some uh, ultramarine. I want to get some, uh, maybe a little bit of the Prussian blue. I'm going to take my camera over here and show you how wet I'm making this. This is a, a pretty dark blue but it's also very wet. It's a dark blue glaze. It's like tea, but it's darker in value because I've used darker staining colors. And I'm just going to come in underneath this guy and add more dark right up underneath the boat so we can see. And I'll come, I'll leave a little bit of a light area where those bumpers would be creating a little bit of a, a reflection in the water. Come in over here, and then we'll just follow the current. Get a little bit more dark in there, and I want to get leave some whites or leave some dry areas in between these, and that's the the lighter part of the waves reflecting. And I want to get this water down over here and get a little bit more wet. Very pale, but it's the same same pigment, just more water to it over on this side over here. And you start to see how all this starts coming together. And I'm just going to glaze right across the lower inch and a half of the painting to give a really nice little darker value. So it makes it feel like it's coming forward towards us as a horizontal plane. And I can drop into that darker area, just richer blues. So we really start to feel that, uh, that uh, coming toward the value coming towards us. All right, we're going to let that dry. Um, I'll back up the camera a little bit so you can see the overall look. I've got to get darker around some of these boats now, but I want to let this dry first. So I'll let you get caught up with that and have fun with it. I've got a dry line here. I'm going to soften this a little bit so it doesn't look like a, a rock in the middle of my ocean. And we'll let that dry.
going to clean up this a little bit. There we go. All right, while we're uh, letting that dry, I'm going to go in and put in my buoys and um, show you a little bit about how to, to get that to soften so they look like reflections. We're going to start with a pretty strong red. I want to, uh, I made the mistake of trying to use orange in my first painting. I think it just was too, too pale. So I'm going to add a little bit of orange and a pyro red. Both of them are very warm. And I want to get a nice red in a couple of spots here. And then clean my brush. And I'm just going to kind of tickle that deposit of paint that I put on these dry areas where the buoys are. And just push my brush up towards that dry pigment, I mean that deposit of, of rich paint. And by, by just dragging or pushing a damp brush that's clean towards that, it grab some of that rich pigment and it pulls it down into that damp area that's wet. I want to get a couple more of these uh, in a few places. I had one here. I had, I think I, I had two up, three up here. Clean your brush and just kind of push your brush towards those that's damp and then your brush is just damp. So it, it will not be as intense a color as it comes down towards and into the, uh, the reflection in the water. We'll let that dry. I'm gonna get this one a little bit lighter by picking up some of that paint. I don't want these to be the center of interest. I just want them to be little warm spots back here in the back that are subliminal. They kind of carry our eye back towards the back. And uh, that works. Now we'll, we'll take a little bit darker uh, red or pink, and I might just drop a few little things here or there in a couple of spots. Not too much. This one didn't get enough, so we're going to help him along a little bit. There we go. Now, the water is not dark enough in a couple of these places. So I'm gonna come back and try to get a little bit of a, of a mixture of burnt sienna and the cobalt blue mixture. See if I can't really just darken this a little bit in a couple of spots and just clean my brush and thin that water out as it moves across. So it's not all exactly the same color, but I wanna get this darker against these boats. It just isn't, dark enough. So we'll get a little bit of burnt sienna in the water there to make those boats stand out. And I just, this is why I use a flat because I can really drag this across like a glaze very, very quickly and not have to dwell on it. And I'm not, I just kind of get in and get out with that brush stroke. And I'm going to push a little bit of damp brush up towards that dark that I put underneath the boat. I'll do the same right in here, clean my brush and just push a damp brush towards that. So it just starts creeping downward a little bit and creates a gradation. And, and the net effect is we are darkening around these, these boats to the extent that uh, we start to, to see the boats a little easier as they're kind of lost in all this water. They, they stand out as stronger negative shapes. I'm going to get this a little darker right down in here. This one needs to be a little darker. It's almost like there's a bit of a shadow cast by some of these boats, but it makes sense. It, it helps us see them as uh, shapes without and it still leaves a lot for the imagination for the viewer. All right, now I want to get a little warmer over here. I want to just maybe add a little bit of uh, raw sienna in the water, kind of as a reflection of what's in the, the land above it. And I'm just dragging it down so it's wet and it doesn't have any shape. It's just a, a, a temperature change within the water and it just works. So. 
we'll, uh, we'll add a little bit of a darker red to the bow of this boat. Take my rigger, where did it go? It's on the other side. And uh, we will just make sure that we have all these things kind of filled in around it. I don't like that. That look at that. That just made a mess. Sometimes if you, you if you get your red too wet next to these other colors, it just leaves a really strange um, bloom. We'll cover that up after it dries. If you try to do something now, it just won't look right. It, it, you have to wait for things to dry a little bit. So now I want to uh, soften the front of this with just a real pale bit of color in here, just almost like a little bit of reflection. See how just adding a little bit of a uh, very subtle color in here just helps to kind of create these little spider webs of reflection. Softening some of the edges just makes them more believable. I think I want to get this, pull this, some of the water right up into the side of this boat. So we just almost lose the edges of the bottom of the boat a little bit. And I'm going to get a nice dark uh, on the back side of this boat. We're going to take some of that Prussian blue that we used. And we'll just create a nice dark there. Up in this, on the shadow side of this uh, bow sprint, we're gonna put some dark in there. Pulls that towards us. I, I think we, we probably need to have a little bit of warmth on the back side of this uh, bumper. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of orange here. It just gives it a little bit of glow. You can use pink or you can use orange, doesn't matter. Um, but it just helps us believe that there's some reflected light on there. And I might even take a little bit of uh, uh, warm yellow, put something on the top of these guys just to give us a little bit of detail there. I might even put a little bit of this in the, in the water where the bumpers are, where the buoys are. And then uh, I'll come back with my white my, my white uh, gouache, and we will um, put the, the bow sprints on these other boats. But inside this other boat, I want to clean this up a little bit. It's got kind of, see how you can kind of clean up the edge just real with a stiffer brush. Um, and it, you don't need to do much, but a little bit goes a long way. So you can soften any marks. Now, dry it. And we'll start putting a few details on to just really kind of give it some character. And I think it'll come to life. One of the things I've done is I like to use these little paper bowls sometimes. If you put any kind of a, a gouache anywhere near your mixing well or your pigments that are transparent watercolor, you're contaminating them. So I always try to find something where I can mix up a little bit of color um, from an opaque pigment uh, in another uh, mixing area. And in this case, I'm using this, this nice little paper plate. And I'll take my, my rigger and I'll just mix up this white and just get a little bit of water on it so that it, it mixes nicely. And then I can come back and I can actually punch up some of these, like the area in the front of this boat. I can, uh, whoops, I got a little bit fat. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And then while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm just gonna get some darker uh, uh, burnt sienna and drop in some things that look like they might be on the inside of that boat. Just a little bit of dark in there, just to kind of give it some definition. Doesn't need much. We can do the same thing with a little bit of warm violet for the middle boat. Just kind of come in here with a few darks. 
I'm not going to do anything with the back boat. And I might add uh, just a little bit of that, that darker color on a couple of these buoys, just the shadow side. Just to give them a little bit of dark compared to what's in the reflections. Now I'm going to go back and get some of that white after I clean my brush and see if we can't uh, get the, the bow of these boats to be a little taller. There we go. And a little bit of reflection in the, in the water. And, and a lot of these buoys have lines that are anchoring them. So I've got, and the, the, the current is pulling them. So I'm just going to let them kind of skip through the water in a couple of spots. And then maybe some of these guys are tied up. But this guy, we actually are going to see his boat, his line. And maybe there's another one over there. He's got two lines. And we might actually come back in and redefine the edge of his um, gunnel. With a little bit of white. So now we've got a pretty strong boat in our, in our center of interest. And I think, uh, Lois, how we, how's everybody doing? Are we at a point where we need to let people get caught up or is everybody paying along with me? Yes, I think this? give them a little bit of time just to catch up would be good. I'm going to show you how to get that sparkle in there last. But in the meantime, I want everybody to uh, be, have a chance to get, get to this point in their painting. So I'm just putting a few little things on these buoys. There we go. Might even have a little bit of dark on that. breaking up where these reflections go across the, uh, the side of the boat just by lifting a little bit of uh, the blue paint, the blue pigment off the accent bands, just to create the impression that there's a, a bit of a highlight or reflections in a couple spots here. Down in the water, I'm going to actually have take this stiffer brush and I'm just going to slightly lift a little bit of value. I'm not trying to take it back to white. I'm just creating a little lighter area where there might be a hint of reflection underneath these buoys just to kind of break that up and give us the impression that they are, are seen in the, the light sparkling off that water. There. Get a little bit of dark with some ultramarine blue and some uh, burnt sienna. Makes for a really nice, rich dark. And I'm going to add just a little bit of dark in a couple of spots where that, that uh, shoreline might be. I don't want it to be a continuous line, but I do want to get some dry brush in here, maybe get a few little textural things going on. Um, I'm just scrunching my brush on the, in the uh, side of the, off the side of the brush and then picking up some of the dry paint to kind of replicate where some of the darks are in the shadows where the water is lapping up against the shore creating these little reflections of dark there i'm 
All right. Take my eraser, make sure I've got any lines where I want my whites to show up. That all works. I'm going to take just some dirty uh, blue and just make this side of the, the this bow a little bit darker, just so it feels like light is hitting and reflecting back more onto this side of the boat. I'll, I'll lift a little bit off of that outer edge of the, the, the bow while it's wet. That works. I'm going to take a little bit of peacock blue while we're waiting for everybody to get caught up here and mix it with a little bit of sap green. And I'm going to just throw in some really dark brush strokes right across this foreground area here. If I get a little skipping or dry brush effect, so much the better. Get a little bit of blue mixed into that. You see how these, when you go into a dry area with these nice darks, it really breaks up the reflections and it, it reinforces where you've already established your current we're just re reestablishing those darks in a couple of spots. You don't need to do it everywhere, but it just helps to, to really ground everything with a nice rich dark. And we can do this at this point in the painting because uh, everything's dry. There, I don't wanna get too much. All right. I'm going to do, see what happens if I put a little water on this, let it run right up underneath the boat. I'm going to tip it towards so it runs in the direction of the current. Just let that just kind of flow a little bit. Take some rich darks. There. I'm going to try this. Taking clean water, dropping a little bit of clean water into uh, between these uh, really rich dark shapes, and it sometimes will bloom, sometimes it won't. You just never know. And everything has to be dry before we go into the next step. sprinkling a little bit of water into this uh, wet area in the foreground. It's now about half dry, so I can get away with dropping a few uh, dew drops in there to get the blooms to appear. All of this texture that we see that's real fluid in the foreground and all the texture in the background is very organic compared to the rigidity and the structure we see in the, in the four boats. And that really draws our attention to the hard edges of the boat and the negative shapes of the boat. All the rest of this just kind of flows and our eye moves across it, but we keep coming back to strong edges that are, that are well-defined. Um, 
whether they're negative shapes or they're uh, something else. I'm going to drop in a little value behind this boat just to kind of establish uh, the edge of that shape, just feathering in. And, and this is really nothing more than going back and evaluating, do I have enough dark in my, uh, my background to make this read right? And I'm just dropping these in against the, the backside of the, uh, the boat so we see that, that nice value change. And I've got, I just want to pick that up. There we go. Okay. I'll let this dry so we can uh, do some splattering. How are we doing on questions? Anything, anybody have any questions? No, people are frantically painting, I think. <laughs> well, that's good. Everybody's busy, working away. Adding just a touch of richer red to a couple of these buoys just to give them more contrast to the cool water. So they stand out a little bit. Maybe a dot of red right up here on the, the boat itself. Just to draw attention to the bumpers. It's still pretty, pretty wet here. I wanna make sure this is Nice and dry. All right, I'm going to get a little bit more uh, white gouache mixed up here. I, I'm just putting a, one little squeeze of it in the bottom of this bowl. Um, I don't know if you can see, there's not much there. It's just a little bit of a, a squeeze. And then I'll take my rigger and get some and add water to that. So I've got enough moisture on the and, and dampness on my rigger that I can come back with this. It's, it's on my brush. I don't know if you can see my brush in the, in the uh, screen, but what I'm gonna do is hold it fairly loosely way out on the end of my rigger, just with the, the three fingers, my thumb and two forefingers. And then I'm just gonna lightly tap the edge of this and just little tiny droplets of white will come off randomly. If you do it too hard though, they'll leave a long uh, linear pattern of, of droplets. We just want to have very random looking and, and fairly small droplets of water that replicate little, just a little bit of sparkle in the water without getting too carried away. If you do too much, it's, you know, little goes a long ways in my, my opinion. But I think you can see as I zoom in that those little droplets of, of white create a bit of a sparkle or little bubbles in the water that, that kind of enhance the overall effect. Then using that same white, I'll take, you know, make sure I've got plenty of pig pigment flowing off the end of my rigger. And I can come back in here and I'm, I'm picking this corner, the lower right corner to sign my painting because from a compositional standpoint, it helps balance all the activity that's going on over in the left side. So I'll come back in and, and a lot of times I like to take a tissue before I use a gouache and make sure that I have a sharp enough point on this. So when I start to write, you know, I've got a nice result. And that there you, uh, you have a nice uh, result. I'm going to put a little bit of white on the edge of these bumpers just to punch up the, uh, the whiteness of their side and maybe a little bit of white reflection on some of these, uh, these buoys on the left side just to kind of suggest that there's a little bit of, a, of light coming from the left and then the right side of the buoys has the darker red on them and it just makes a little more sense 
to create that directionality of light and shadow. But that, uh, the other thing you can do is if you want to get a little bit of burnt sienna and add that to the, uh, the Payne's gray. So you got a nice, here's what I'm doing. I'm mixing up just a nice mixture of really dark darks. Come back to my painting. Uh, I don't really want to get that in my, in my uh, water. So I'll take a paper towel or, or maybe just a piece of paper. That's probably the best thing. I can lay a piece of paper across my painting. And then I'll use that and just do the same thing I did with the water, but I'll just put some splatter up in the, the background and, the, and create just a little additional texture. These are just little effects you can do to enhance that background without actually having to paint anything. And sometimes it shows up, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I'm gonna take a little stronger uh, burnt sienna, put some of that in a few spots just to enhance that a little bit. I think you can see now uh, it does show up a little bit. Let's see if I can square up my camera. How's that? There you go. And always clean your brush if you're gonna change colors. Uh, I can always pick up a little more gouache and put a few more sprinkles of, of white here in the lower uh, right corner, possibly. I don't know that I want any up there, but, but that uh, to me kind of fulfills our, our uh, objective in what we're doing with this boat. I'm going to take my white and just create a little, whoops, boy, that, too much water on that. So it just came right off the edge of the brush. Sometimes we can just get a little bit, doesn't want to cooperate. We'll leave it alone. I think we're done. <laughs>